Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be chatting about nested loops. And let me tell you what, these are important and they will come up in your coding career. So make sure you understand the concepts in this video. Now, before we dive in, you know, you gotta check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain offers classes in JavaScript-based web development. So if you need to get up to speed, basically go from nothing to pro in just a matter of weeks, then check out Dev Mountain. They have classes in person and online. If you go in person, the housing is at no additional cost. So yeah, that's like basically free living. So that's pretty sweet. Check it out. And um, the link is in the description. So let's get started. Let's go back to loops and let's just see what we can do. So let's just create a for loop and we'll just create the iterator to be i and we'll say less than 10. So this is gonna go from zero to nine and then we'll just increment i. Now, just like we're using i here for this iterator, well, if we have a nested loop, there's a convention to use either like a k or a uh, j. So we're gonna use a k. So we're gonna say let k equals zero and then make sure you use k for all of these. k is less than 10 and then k plus plus. And then what we're gonna do is inside of this other loop, we're going to console log i comma k. So we can see the state of the variable for each console log. So what this is going to do is it's going to console log zero through nine, every single iteration of this outer loop. So it should print zero through nine, <laughs> 10 times zero through nine of the outer loop. So let's do a refresh and let's just go through what's happening. So here's the first iteration of the outer loop, all of the zeros on the left here, that's the I variable. And then one, the ones on the right is the K variable, zero through nine. Then I is incremented and it does it all again. Then I is incremented and it does it all again, the twos. And then it's incremented to three and it goes all the way again from zero to nine. So you can see the pattern here. Basically this for loop is going to execute every single iteration of this for loop. That's the way nested loops work. And oftentimes you can use the variables, the iterator up here inside the for loop down here. So for example, we could set K equal to I. And because I changes every single iteration, it's going to change the way the loop works each iteration of the outer loop. So if we do a refresh now, let's take a look at the top. It goes from zero all the way up to nine for the first iteration. And then it starts at one because I is one. And then the next one, it starts at two. And then the next one, it starts at three. So you can see that by referencing I in this inner for loop, we changed that inner loop to start at a different number each iteration of the outer loop. So it can get pretty complicated and it's kind of hard to visualize here in this console just cause it's like a bunch of numbers. <laughs> so what I thought would be cool is if we get a little bit more practice working with HTML and I'm gonna go over some stuff on how to, how to modify the HTML. We're gonna get into this in more detail later on in this series, but for now you can just follow along and, and see what we can come up with. So let's create some code to basically create like a pyramid like structure. And you can do that very easily with nested for loops. So here's what we're gonna do. We're, oh my golly. So let's go through an example where we wanna create a loop that for the outer loop, it's going to go from zero to nine. And then the inner loop, it's going to count down from whatever the outer loop is. So when you look at the big picture, what, what's gonna happen is it's going to print zero, and then it's gonna print one zero, and then it's gonna print two one zero, and then three two one zero. <laughs> you guys get the picture. And basically it's going to make a triangle like structure. So it's a little weird to visualize in our brain right now. So what we need to do is we need to work with the HTML to make this print out on the screen here. So go over into the index.html and what we're going to add in the body here is we are going to create a div and we're going to give it an ID. We'll just say destination. And what we're going to be able to do is get a reference to this div to allow us to append information right here. So make sure you save it and then back in the JavaScript file, what we need to do is up top, we can say, let D, that's just the name that we're going to use to reference that element. And then we call a function document.getElementById. And we pass in the ID of destination. So that is how we get a reference to that element. Now we can talk to that element using this D variable. Now what we need to do is we need to change this inner loop a little bit because we want to count down from I. So we need to set K to I and then k is greater than or equal to zero, and then count down 
Awesome. So let's just do a refresh and see that console log. Make sure it's doing what we want. So it does zero and then it does one zero and then two one zero and then three two one zero and then yeah, so forth. So it seems to be working. So instead of doing a console log here, what I actually want to do is I want to append to that element. So we can say d dot append and then we can just put whatever we want in here. So we could put k and then we'll just put a space like so. Awesome, now let's do a refresh. Let me get rid of this a little bit. All right, so we do a refresh. And it seems to be working, but it's not quite there. What we need to do is we actually need to put a break because this should be on its own line, and then this should be on its own line, and then this should be on its own line. So what we can do to do that is in here, after the for loop, the inner for loop, sorry, after the inner for loop, because we want a space after each iteration, we could say document.createElement and then inside of parentheses br. So this is how we create a break and we need to assign that to a variable. So we're just gonna assign that to br and then we just say d.appendChild and pass in that variable. So that is the syntax to create a break, do a refresh and there we go. So it goes 0, 10, 210, 0, and so forth. So that's a little bit of fun with some nested loops. It seems kind of uh, kind of pointless right now, but <laughs> later on it will make more sense once we have nested lists and so forth. Lots of useful information here. Make sure you guys understand how this works. Nested loops was one of the hardest things I had to get over to really become better at programming. But once I got it down, I finally understood that they can be used for lots of different things. So make sure you understand this inner loop and how it references the variable here and how each one of these is printed out in what order. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, let me know in the, in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.